Hello, and welcome to Roll For It. Sorry we're slightly late. There were some issues, especially with some reason Twitch wasn't ingesting for a moment. Uh, we thought it was streaming. Uh, but yeah, welcome to Roll For It, uh, the show where we're going to be playing some RPG. We're going to be playing a tabletop RPG called Shadowrun today, which you may have seen us play last week. Shadowrun being an urban fantasy in the future kind of thing. Um, got to write some great backstory to it. But uh, yeah, so we're going to be diving straight into that with uh, our lovely characters today. We've got uh, Pseudo Avak, we've got K Bastijo, Pug Shen, and Blobex Splatter. So that's going to be a load of fun. Now, uh, just some quick headlines and stuff. Uh, we have been in touch with Twitch. They say they're interested in partnering with us and so on, but we're still waiting to hear back. So any traffic you can get our way, so, you know, tweet, etc., cetera, whatever, uh, really does help. So feel free to spread the word, etc., or, you know, just get your dog watching, whichever. But, uh, yeah, we'll be diving straight in since we did start a little bit late today. So... Uh, our characters after last week ended with having successfully, uh, I say successfully, managed to extract the target from a uh, police transit van. Um, admittedly, he was bleeding out, had lost an arm because of uh, police brutality, as yeah. far as everyone else is concerned. Bloody, Brandy Bloody King! Brandy first. King! <laughs> yep. Uh, it was definitely not due to some technomancer gremlins causing guns to go off. Uh, nope. Don't see the violence inherent in the system? Yeah. <laughs> Why do they repress us so? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and they managed to then hand they, uh, their contact over to the Johnson, and they got paid in full, despite the nature of the package being somewhat now bloodied. Uh, after that, they found out that um, there were a couple of images of uh, Pug and Blowback now available because they'd been captured by the Lone Star Cops and they didn't have their uh, faces covered. Uh, Kaber does a pitch as well, though it's very, very, very poor quality. Maybe the ones about Pug and Blowback are still pretty bad quality as well because they were taken in like fleeting camera of your gun goes past someone's face and uh, there were headlights and stuff, and it's not great, but there certainly is a little bit of information out there now on them, so they are uh, in a little bit of, maybe not hot water, but certainly at least warm water. Uh, okay, and right, so there are a couple of things we need to do in the intervening week in between uh, that and your new run. Uh, so, for a start, I know one thing off the top of my head. Kaba. Kaba has, for those of you who are wondering, uh, insomnia. So what does that mean, Kaba? Um, it basically means that for me to recover from any sort of stun damage, I need to make a very special roll. So normally to recover from uh, stun damage, you need to roll body plus willpower, and any hits recover that amount of stun damage. But for an Insomniac, you normally need to roll a Intuition willpower, and if you get four hits on it, then you can recover your stun damage as normal, but if you don't get four hits on it, then I've got 24 hours before I'm allowed to recover stun damage again. So it can build up over time if I get hit with a lot of stun damage. Okay. So, uh, basically you have... I think you're on the Friday night. You get a chance to rest. So, roll for Friday. Good luck, Sudo. <clears throat> Knock himself out before the round. <laughs> Two hits. Uh, you get a pretty restless night. Um, the the injury you have sustained from being shot at and actually hit by one just very long-range unlucky shot to you uh, still niggles. You sort of have these nightmares and you wake up in a cold sweat. Um, you could always, like, give, give Pug a call. It's like, can you come over here and punch me in the back of the head? <laughs> can you knock me out? <laughs> no, see, I'm, I'm just on the phone constantly calling him, telling him how much of a, of a jerk he is. That's why he can't sleep. <laughs> I want to knock you out so much right now. Click. Not only did you, like, paralyze Beatrice, you wrecked my garden gnome! <laughs> it is true, I forgot about the garden gnome. Bloody <laughs> destructive elf. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> Saturday night, you can try again. Good luck, Kaber. Oh, ah. <laughs> so close! Again, you wake up in uh, cold sweat three times during the night. Can't really uh, get to sleep. Okay, uh, that brings us to Sunday night. Oh, we'll so get there. We'll get there. Do you have any edge spent like left from last session? <laughs> no, you have um, it all up. I do, but I need to like I don't have any left from last session, and to get it back, I need to sleep. So yeah. uh, you you get your edge back at the beginning of effectively when we begin this session. So uh, if since you don't have well, any left, well, with insomnia, I need to 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I need to sleep for that. Uh, we're now on Monday, and that is when you're going to get your next job. So I'm afraid. How many points of stun damage do you have that just haven't healed? Just two. Just two. Okay, so it's, it's not, not terrible. So bad. But unfortunately, you just haven't been able to sleep. Other than, you know, in and out, maybe half an hour here, half an hour there, whatever. No, no proper full REM. Uh, unfortunately, mate, you're still, you're still smarting. That bruise is very deep and yellow, and you feel like maybe you've got some sort of very internal bruising, but uh, you will be starting the session with uh, two stun. Uh, now, uh, I don't want to say it, but karma. Just putting it out there. <laughs> the punishment for paralyzing someone for life. Two stun yeah. damage. Actually, a lot cheaper than we thought. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so, um, I'm just going to say one notable thing that the group did do. After they found out their faces went everywhere last week, I believe you all went out and bought ballistic face masks, didn't you? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, don't worry, they are sporting, uh, when they choose to wear them, ballistic face masks, which will hopefully hide the... That's pretty much exactly it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. So, uh, we begin this session. Monday. Uh, about 6 p.m. Uh, I believe, Kaber, when you called up the Johnson last time, you called from your main comlink, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, about 7 p.m., you get a call. A full, just audio, no, no video coming through on this one, uh, from a number you don't recognize. Okay. Back up. Oh, uh, hello, Kaber. I believe you know a mutual acquaintance of ours. Uh, I believe you and your friends uh, deserve some reward for your last uh, help you offered us, and I would like to offer you a job. Okay. I'm interested. That. Uh, well, if you can bring your friends, uh, if you will like to meet us. Uh, I have an address in Southside. It pings over to your AR. This is just basically a GPS tag that shows the exact address and location. Um, if you will meet us there as soon as you are available, I think you ha we have something that you will uh, very much be pleased to see. Alright. I'll, uh, I'll be there as soon as. Okay. Cool cuts. Right, I'm just going to forward on to... Um to Sudo and Blowback and let them know exactly what's going on and once again tell them to let the troll know. I forward to the troll. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Ping a message over to, uh, to Blowback saying do we want to take the van or do we want to just like grab some public transport and meet up in a central location? I think we should probably bring the van along. Make a call on that one. Seeing as like a location, probably roll out there with a little bit of caution, but also prepared. And I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna come strapped. I don't know what you guys are coming with. I'll probably just keep a hold out with me. But I do think we should have the van nearby, just in case, because like a face to face, like paying a location on Google Maps and just being like, "See you over there." It doesn't it makes me a little nervous. A little dwarvish anxiety. Yeah. What is this location? Like, a, uh, a cursory Google Maps check? Sort sure. Of thing? Effectively, you, you look it up on Ares Google Maps, uh, and it quite quickly shows that this is effectively uh, what used to be basically um, a few stories of reasonable quality apartments that maybe have gone a little bit more uh, run down these days. Um, any information for any businesses or anything there just reveals that there is a uh, laundrette. Have, have we gone to the trouble to repaint the van at all? I think that would probably be a smart idea. Right now we've got it painted really, really, like, crazy garishly. And it's purely for comedic value. <laughs> That's the only reason we keep it that way, is for, for pink mohawk laughs. Pink mohawk, yeah. I'm thinking we may want to get the van taken care of and make it, like, matte white. Or, like, matte black, or just something that blends in. You can do that if you want. I think it would be wise. That'll require it to go into the shop, though, so we may lose the van for, like, the run. Is that 
what we'd be because I, I know a paint job will take a couple of days, bare minimum. Uh, what's the ruling on that, EE? -E? Uh, right now, basically, you've got uh, Johnson saying be here as soon as possible. You can get it repainted. Uh, you know Little Raj pretty well, who is your contact for that sort of stuff, I believe. Um, is it is it Little Raj actually? No. Uh, do you have a contact for vehicles? Yeah, that's pretty much Little Raj in general. He's okay. kind of like a street race kind of. He owns a chop yeah. shop, and so and I assume you would have either. He's loyalty four. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he he would be happy to repaint it for you. It would take like basically two hours. Basically, paint it, wait, paint it, wait, paint it, and let it dry. Um, he can do it pretty quick. He likes you, but it will be out for a few hours. So it's up to you whether you want to take it to this. Currently, it does still say Misery Machine on green with like bright orange and like swirls and a, a big like flower. Easter colors. All right, so I'm gonna <laughs> ping everybody and. Essentially, in the message, we're going to take a team vote. Should I put the van in to get painted for two hours? You guys want to head over there right now? Well, can get painted. I've been, you know, in, in the days downtime since uh, the job, as as the uh, the technomancer of the group, I've been busying myself. But just, you know, obviously, since they, their faces out there, I've been keeping an eye for identifying information. Would I have actually seen anything about the van? Uh, yeah, you would have seen some cursor reports, uh, basically the information you would have gleaned since, you know, you've had several days to just try and watch as many reports about what happened as possible. Uh, you would have seen reports saying, A, that there was a Lone Star officer who was seriously injured and is in hospital, uh, having lost an eye. Um, there's actually accompanying that, there's footage and interview, etc. saying, you know, I'm soldiering on blah, 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 Lone Star, happy to protect and serve. Um, and then they, they talk to him, and they also have his wife and his two children next to him. And they're obviously playing the sympathy angle on that one. And they talk about how, you know, uh, he was a rising star in the force, etc. How this is going to take out, how his, how his wife feels about this, how they're going to, you know, move on, etc. And uh, be able to persevere. Um, there's also a discussion about how these uh, criminals uh, took out an old elderly couple nearby to be able to use their home as a, as a, as a fire point. Um, and how that uh, Beatrice um, and her husband uh, were, were brutally attacked and that she is actually suffering from a, a degenerative neural disease, uh, which is why, as an elf, she looks slightly older. Um, elves generally don't look more than, like, 30 in general. Uh, and that she's actually suffered a fracture to the C2 and C3 vertebrae, and that means it's possible she'll never walk again, although they are trialing some... Uh, you know, some surgery of their dock working contract, although they don't have the much money for it, so they're going to have to sell the house, etc. So any information you do have on these, and then the pictures come along, uh, these, these I'd be criminals. forwarding all of the ones about Beatrice to Kaber, by the way, along with some choice words. Do you, do you forward the house price listing? I've been forwarding everything okay. about Beatrice. And, and Little how... PNGs of Jiminy yep. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> yep. well, the house is available for uh, 160,000 noyen. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, you know, if you're interested. Um, <laughs> the the images themselves, again, they're pretty blurry. The one of Cave is very, very blurry. It's very far away. It was from the, the smart gun link on the guy's pistol. It was dark. It was terrible. The pictures of Pug and Blowback, still similarly, they were from smart gun weapons being like flailed around and pointed very quickly with gunfire going off. Not great quality, but there's some resemblance there. You know them, so you, you definitely be like, that's them. Maybe someone who saw you in the street would have a harder time, but it's possible. Uh, actually, on this note, Suda, you said that in the meantime time, you want to do something with that footage you had. Um, given how much time has gone past... Oh, you've uh, had three days. So, yeah, yeah I, I was going to be uh, trying to disseminate that footage after obviously having cleaned it to remove as much of the obvious blowback and uh, pug visuals in there. I, I feel they're famous enough. I don't want them overshadowing me, you know. So uh, I, I've cruelly doctored them out of their, their best work yet. But I have been disseminating that footage amongst the uh, Shadowrunner community and uh, a few data havens that Sudo would frequent. Just just putting it out there, just to, to try and get the message out to the masses. But the man is, is, is not helping them. The man is just keeping them down. Cruelly gunning down people in the streets. What a scallywag. Okay, that so uh, for cleaning the footage, roll me... Uh, just a data processing, I guess. 
Okay. Make that a normal data processing test. Or would it be... Actually, no, there is a thing for this. It'd be edit file, wouldn't it? Mm. Edit file, edit file. Uh, Compute plus logic, limited by your data processing. Yeah. I'd probably have uh, one of my sprites do that, since they're a lot better at it than me. Sure. Uh, that will use a, a service, I guess. But yeah, go for it. Uh, let me pop all this up. I haven't prepared for this one, so you'll have to bear with me just a moment. Um, so have we decided on flat black or flat white? Or are we doing like a Ooh, muffin God. machine or maybe something else? I think we should. Uh, <laughs> I think we should paint it black. Burnt muffin with white racing stripes. It can be the badger. <laughs> take it, and it could. We could each have our own segment of the van, and it'll be like color changing. And then we could all just pick a color at the beginning of the day, so we can all just disagree in yet another way. <laughs> well, it looks like the car is black, red, green, and purple today. <laughs> yep, you can get Ruthenian polymer coating, which uh, can be color changing. I think you can get it at a second grade, which allows it to basically be a chameleon coat. I think there's two grades for it. I'd have to double check. Um, but yeah, you, you can get effectively an invisible van that can change color. Damn, By the way, we make it invisible? Yeah, That's if you get up. the really good quality stuff. I mean, the wheels oh, and the windows don't change. But everything else does. <laughs> so it's just like heads floating past on the road. <laughs> on top of wheels, like four feet above. I mean, if 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 they're behind you because there's no windows behind in your van, like it's fine, like that that'd be fine. Like if you're in the front of you, they see this windscreen, and like <laughs> that's it. They're just like what? Rendering error. Yep. Right. So to we have got data processing and computer. So for this one, it would be oh. And there we go. Ah, I always forget to put the uh, five. On my uh, that was three, four, five, four, five, five hits. Um, so yeah, it that was processing limit is seven. Seven. Okay, so you get five hits. Uh, you think you've Actually, cleaned it pretty man. well. Um, I hope so. Now... <laughs> Bloody sprite. Now to You'll distribute have a it. Sound talking to after this. How do you want to distribute it? Like I said, disseminating it through data havens just. And, and sh the Shadowrunner um, community as a whole, not any... through any sort of legitimate network. Okay, do you have I've any specific contacts? Contact. Yes, I've got an information broker. Um, yeah, she'd be interested in that. In fact, some was asking for that footage uh, shortly after the run, actually, late Saturday night. So, yeah, oh. she, she would be interested and she would buy it off you for 200 million. Oh, fantastic. Unexpected Noyan is best Noyan. She's not going to do this is she? <laughs> These snuff films, they go quick. <laughs> How much was that again, sorry? 200. 200. Perfect. Do you need any more data from me? Uh, yeah, I'll need you to make an intuition plus... Call it an intuition plus data processing test to be able to dispute it where you think it will get the maximum amount of traction <laughs> without any okay. blowback. Um, uh, so effectively, it. intuition for your knowledge about where these sort of things best percolate from. And the data processing to just get as many out as possible. Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, no, it'd be intuition plus computer limited by data processing. Yeah. Intuition plus computer limited yeah. by data processing, which is five. My computer... Let me just yeah, it's the equivalent of a matrix search, effectively. Okay. Um, chat saying your voice needs to go up. I'll just do that. Don't worry, chat. I'm paying attention. If you say some of the voices are a little bit low, I can turn them up. I had two successes. Not oh, very good, but there we go. Two successes. Okay, there's a little bit of traction. There's, uh, you know... Some minor posts on some forums and bulletin boards and so on saying, you know, it's you know more Lone Star uh, brutality, etc. Because um, the footage you have, Blowback was on the other side of the van, didn't see it as far as I'm aware. Pug was down. Stejo does have a copy. Stejo, does your sniper rifle have a smart link? Who, sorry? Uh, sorry, Kava. What's my name? Uh, Kava, uh, you, do you have a smart link on your sniper rifle? No. In which case, it would be from your vision. Uh, your vision doesn't have any enhancements, however, um, as far as I'm aware. So you get this... Nope, just my natural elvish vision. It's kind of a bit fuzzy. It's very dark. But you do see, generally, this sort of figure pull out a shotgun 
and generally point it in vaguely the direction of the captive that they were moving, and then, you know, it goes off, and there's this, like, Probably worked to our but, advantage, honestly, uh, that it wasn't that detailed. It in probably does case. work to well your done. advantage. Um, well done, Caver, for being such a low-tech sniper. <laughs> <laughs> the, the detail in it is pretty terrible, but you can see vaguely the person who did the shooting was the person who pulled the shotgun out. He doesn't, you can't see his facial expression, you can't see that he's surprised by his own shotgun going off. Uh, you can't see any of that, so place to your advantage and uh, that does get a bit of traction especially because you know um people are annoyed about lone star brutality especially the uh recent uh privatization of the police uh in london so yeah you managed to get some traction on that well done um yay so uh you were saying about the van are we gonna send it to the chop shop yeah let's send it on over to the chop shop and for right now what are my options for the paint jobs uh, you can either have it just painted a matte color. That's a fairly cheap job. Uh, little Raj likes you. Like, it'll be a couple of hundred noyan max. Uh, if you want the Rathim polymer, I will have to go look it up, but it will also take a lot of time for Little Raj to procure that because that stuff is, I believe, forbidden. Uh, the reason it's forbidden, it used to be restricted. The reason it's forbidden is I run a team out of Germany, uh, tried to kidnap a child from some family. Um, they managed to grab the child. They put them into a Rathenian polymer bag so that they could, you know, escape without it being obvious that they were kidnapping a child. Uh, they got gunned down by bodyguards out in the street. And then the, the police and the ambulances approaching the scene accidentally ran over the child. So Rathenian polymer is now kind of heavily forbidden by some people because oh. of the knock-on effect of that. Um, accidentally, right. I mean, oh, maybe, star. you know. Accidentally. Well, to be fair, I imagine, I imagine the police guys are like, did we just run over something? I saw nothing on the road. There was a weird bump. They got out, and just, the road seems to just be bleeding from nothing. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Her father Better back the over it and see if it council. does it again. Yeah, there, there is footage of that on the Matrix at certain parts, and I'm sure that Pseudo will have been able to find that if he cares. Um, but yeah, okay, so yeah, Little Raj Let's says just, that, um, you know, he'll get your price back on the thin polymer if you want it, or if you want just a spray job, he'll do it for you. And Let's just primer it for right now. I'll get the better okay. paint job done later when we got some downtime. Okay, so basically he just, you know, paints over it, rips off the, the dark vinyl decals and stuff, and for like, since it's just a primer job, and it's just going to be a plain white and he assumes you will come back for Rathim Polymer later. He says, you know what, I'll, I'll let you have this one slightly cheap and uh, you know, I expect you to come back for the Rathim Polymer. So uh, yeah, call that 159. Cool. He likes you, so he expects repeat service. <laughs> we were sellies. We yeah. did have to ignore each other like masturbating in a cell. He's just like, alright, you turn and go to your corner right now, it's my turn. It was rough. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Probably more information than I ever wanted. I'm just saying, it's prison. She gets real in there. This is not this is not a clean world to live in. Dude, it does not want to go to prison. <laughs> Dude would not last in prison, no. Dude, Sudo is a very, very gentle wallflower. Uh, yeah, so how are you going to make it to this meet, or are you going to wait for the van to be primed? Because it's going to take about two hours. I'm going to wait for it to be primed so that we don't like run around and get seen by surveillance. If they've got like some random surveillance of the van. I thought they didn't know anything about it. If they know something about it, though, we really need to get that handled first. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, uh, because you were speeding up the intersection quickly afterwards, uh, some traffic cameras caught you. Blowback would get easy. a... Uh, would get a, a little doo-doo on his, on his comlink. Um, I'd be sending him a message saying, before you <clears throat> sent the new yen needed for... Uh, I forget what... Uh, ruthenium polymer have a think about electronic paper a bit cheaper a bit less likely to get the wrong sorts of people taking notice when you buy that much i will google that later <laughs> i will aries that later i guess is what i should say yes <laughs> okay so what's your plan okay uh, we wait for the primer to get done, and then I think we're all in agreement that we head on over to the meet after that, right? Okay. Uh, about two hours later, um, you basically wait around, I assume, for two hours since Little Raj, you just took it to the shop. Yep. Little Raj hops uh, down from his little uh, stepladder because he's unfortunately a dwarf, and this is a full-size van. Unfortunate. <laughs> Unfortunate. What are you trying to You're say? you racist. I can hear the racism right there, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The worst Disgusting. than a troll. Uh, so he hops hey, down, and he goes, uh, it's ready for you. And uh, that'll be 159. All right, pay it on over. Just wire it real quick, real fast. 
All right, yep, it's good to go. Uh, it might, might be a little bit tacky, just, you know, try and not leave fingerprints on it at the moment. Cool. Good looking out, man. I'll come back for the other job. All right, I'll, uh, I'll put some feeders out. All right. And check the van. And so I get the van back, and I'm going to go around, and if we can find a central location to pick everybody up, that's cool, or I can just make the rounds and we can pick people up. Anybody you guys want to meet at, like, a location where I could pick you up at the same time, or you just want me to go, like, full all the way around London all day? We can turn this into, like, a, a difficult chauffeur thing or an easy chauffeur Go thing. On. We could just meet at the, um, at the Camden Cross again. Cool. Yeah, yeah I send a me. message to them all saying that's fine by me, and, and it's not actually that far away from me at all. It's literally yeah. just picking me up from a few yards away from my front door instead of at my front door. Yeah, I'll, I'll, assume, find front door anyway. I'll assume that being smart enough to wear a, a balaclava or something would be would be bright, considering our faces are, are all over the place right now. So do you want to walk over, you know, around Camden uh, wearing a balaclava? Maybe not like that, no, but I don't think <laughs> I want to wear a mask either. It's up to you. I send... Uh, are you expressing this to the group? Because yeah. I'm also sure, yeah. Uh, well, I'll definitely send a message saying, get a hoodie like everyone else in Camden. Hoodie makes sense. It's probably going to be raining. Just roll up the balaclava like a hat. It's fine. You don't I'm, need yeah, to wear a right full now. face. Yeah, okay, it's so, like a hat, so, and then you can just pull it down. Pug goes into his wardrobe. He pulls out this, like, big, heavy hoodie. Uh, probably this kind of hoodie that you wear for, you know, these days when you just want the hoodie to give you a hug. Uh, as a troll, he probably wouldn't admit that because, you know, grr. But he finds this big woolen hoodie. That is hoodie. also racist. Bloody uh, hell. <laughs> grr. Trolls can't love hugs. Pulls it oh, down. It's goodness. got special little holes in the in the top for his horns, so it fits over. Um, casts a sort of a deep shadow. But yeah, it's it's a genuine, not entirely synthetic fibered hoodie. It's quite nice. It, it says Ares Arms on it, by the way. It's got the big Ares logo. You're a bit of a fan. You're a bit of a fan. Okay. Right, so we uh, all wait wait for uh, for Blowback to come and pick us up. Then I assume. Yes, indeed. I'm on my way. Okay. While you're on your way, pseudo. Oh, rather, I. I'm just pushing information to your comm link. You know, just kind of marked for view later. Just basically little emails, which are literally just listing electronic paper where you can buy it. The, the various retailers around London, because it's, it's not restricted in any way. It's very cheap, and you could literally cover your entire van with it. And then Sudo could draw on your van. It'd be great. And as Blowback totally okay. drives around London after you send him all these messages, uh, he starts getting targeted ads from every shop he goes past that sells uh, electronic yeah. paper going, Oh, we've got enough for an electronic paper. Get t 200 sheets for the cost of 150. Now going special price, colored electronic paper, now available in... And it just repeatedly every time, because this is a place where you've got quite a few of these kind of news agency type places, oh, and yeah. quite a few of them will stock electronic paper. Um, some of them going on about the new resolutions and the fact that they can do semi-holographic 3D uh, sort of, uh, you know... I may have unintentionally just, just signed... Oops. He, he may be getting targeted by spam by printing <laughs> agencies for a while. I, sorry. <laughs> sorry in advance. Unintentional this time. Okay, so uh, obviously the algorithms saw that you were very much interested for some reason in electronic paper in yeah. a very short period of time, and it went, now is our time to strike. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> kind of in your A overlays, I mean, going down centre London, that place is very busy with AR overlays, so you're getting a lot of this stuff up as you're driving, and to be fair, you can just enable driving mode for safety, which will kind of reduce it a little bit, but still some of the more obtrusive ones get in every now and again. Um, are you, by the way, driving manually, or are you letting grid guide do its work? Because around centre London, you do have the ability to go grid guide. Uh, I'll probably keep it manual. Okay. Old like hands-on. I like hands-on wheel. I like driving. Okay. Um, so you, you get to the center of London. They're all sort of waiting there, ready to be picked up. Uh, Pug wearing a big hoodie. Um, note that this is, you know, a 340 kilo troll wearing a, this big hoodie. Uh, it's almost like a tent for someone of your size, really. Um, Go Aries! I could live inside of it. 
<laughs> you probably could. Uh, you will bundle inside the van. Uh, Cam this time is is it's pretty busy. Uh, there's a lot of people going around. Um, you get a couple of people honking on horns behind you as you slow down temporarily in quite, quite a busy flower affair of London. Although, to be fair, it's not like you could be going much faster considering the traffic at this time of day. Um, you also do know this is a lot of people going around, and there's also a lot of advertising, billboards, AR overlays, and security cameras just sweeping the area. Uh, being a, a very central place in London. Um, but you continue on. You manage to go down into Southside, and uh, you head towards the meet. Anything else you want to do before you get there? Uh, before I go into the meet, I'm just going to stow away. I got my coat on, so I'm going to stow away my uh, L36, I think. My uh, light pistol yeah. inside of it, just concealed in its concealed holster. Um, that's all I'm going to bring with me in there. I got my wonderful light fire with me. Don't tell anyone. Okay. Uh, I will rule for the purposes of a giant hoodie on a troll with a small pistol that I'll give you a plus one concealability modifier for that. <laughs> I mean, your lifestyle costs do factor in clothing and a gigantic hoodie does seem a pretty much a fair cop for that one. Uh, Pseudo, what are you going to be taking with you? Uh, myself, uh, my lined coat, um, it's basically a, a, a large dust. My just general, you know, I'm just walking around London kind of clothes, um, a hat, just a, just a baseball cap sort of hat, just, you know, pulled low down and just, you know, not really standing out, but also kind of standing out in the, in the sort of, he looks like everyone else. He doesn't yeah, look like conspicuously from plain sort of thing. If sure. that makes sense. Uh, make me an etiquette roll, um, okay. which would be your sort of your ability to blend in and so on. Um, just, just so, be... just in case. Yeah, sure. Um, can I default on that? Uh, you know, since it is just general London crowds, I say, yeah, you can default quite easily. It's fine. You don't need to get a minus one or anything. You can just roll uh, charisma. Okay. Actually, the etiquette, the intuition. I'm afraid I don't know, as I don't have it on my normal skills. I haven't like made a cheat sheet for it. Unfortunately, um, I would. I would charisma. Yeah, charisma. Then. Yeah, it is okay. charisma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oop. Wow. Oh, critical glitch. glitch. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, Splat, can you make me a perception test? Uh, yep. Yeah. Go ahead and drag that on up. This is going to get interesting. <clears throat> Two successes. Okay. Let me roll mine. Um... You're fine. I don't like the way that you said that. That makes me feel nervous. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, he, he didn't no, say no, roll for initiative. Fine. Don't worry about it. You're good. You're fine. <laughs> he didn't say roll for initiative. You, you, pick, bad? you pick them up. You have a bit of a look around. You notice Sudo coming towards you. He does look a little bit shifty today. Maybe he's a little bit worried about the amount of the AR or whatever. You're not too certain, but he actually does seem to be, for some reason, drawing attention. You're not sure why until you realize that he's actually got odd socks on. And his like shoes are actually odd as well, and that his <laughs> trousers are like uh, quite a, a bright sort of blue jeans, along with a, like a quite red uh, jacket, and it's this kind of weird color coordination. Um, you know, I like sure how they why. can see my red jacket underneath my lined coat. Oh yeah, you've got the lined coat on and top, which is maybe muting that a little bit. Um, but it maybe does look a little bit shifty. Uh, but you, you don't see anything to worry about, so, you know, Pseudo gets in the van, everyone else gets in the van, you bundle off, you have a look around. Just well, you know, I've got a low on. lifestyle, you know? I, I can't afford to have matching shoes. Yeah, yeah. Like, you bloody people living in the lap of luxury. With this is what you call blending shoes. in. In the hood, we wear our left shoe on our right foot because we choose to do it that way. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you, when, you, when you sort of you pull out back into the traffic and you, you look around... You don't see anyone seems to pay attention, so you you move on. Oh my lord! <laughs> <All> right, so <laughs> Pseudo failed his clothing check. Yay me! 
At least he wasn't wearing his pants on the outside of his trousers. Small mercies. Small yeah. mercies. Small mercies. <laughs> okay, so uh, you head down. Uh, Kavo, what are you taking with you in terms of like uh, weaponry or anything? Uh, I'm wearing my suit and taking my holder as usual. Okay. Uh, right. You you pull up. Do uh, you want to pull up in front or just a little bit away? Um. I guess we'll pull up pretty close to the spot so that we can use the van as cover or something like that if we need to. Okay. So you pull up uh, fairly nearby. Um, you notice that as you get there, you see this building seems to be a little bit on the deserted side. There is, you know, a sign saying laundrette, um, clothes cleaned promptly, and uh, there's, a, there's a sign that's actually like a physical sign that's turned around and says closed. Um, it doesn't seem to be really anyone uh, obviously visible from this range, although the, the laundrette has got a load of boxes and stuff and some sort of, uh, like, washing machine stacked up inside and kind of blocks few it particularly far into it. Um, in this place, you sort of, you see kids running around. It's a little bit dilapidated. It's not the greatest of places. I mean, Southside is generally just one step up from the Lambeth Containment Zone in terms of the niceness of the area. Um, it begins to rain a little bit, just a, a little bit of rain and your overlays for everyone but Pug, because Pug doesn't have an AR overlay, um, says, you know, rain today's forecast to be pH 3.2, try to keep your skin covered, etc, blah, blah, blah. Acid rain is, you know, dangerous. And it goes on and on and on about the dangers of acid rain if you click more. Um, but other than that, this place just seems to be a bit of a meh place. Uh, doesn't seem to be okay, anywhere around. Can I make a perception? Sure. Okay, I'll make a perception check. See what happens here. Hopefully, I don't fall on my head. Yeah. You have at least succeeded in not falling on your head. You have opened your eyes. Well done. <laughs> Went to look for something, did not put out eye. Success. Uh, you don't spot anyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll perception as well. Okay. While he's doing that, I'm gonna whisper. Can you hit your boy up, or can you hit the guy up? You got his number. Can I uh, see any devices? Within a hundred meters. Uh, Any icons nearby? Yeah, you can see uh, a fair few. I uh, particularly looking in the direction of the laundromat. Uh, you can see that there are uh, a number of the like the dryers and the washing machines, etc. Do have some icons on board. A few of them seem like their icons have just disappeared, like they're off or they're damaged or whatever. But there are a few of them that are still active. Um, you also notice then that there are quite a few icons in there of com links and several weapons attached to them. Um, they're probably numbering about 16 comlinks uh, and probably more weapons, actually. You're probably looking at something like 27 weapons. I can see a lot of comlinks and an armory's worth of weapons inside that shop. Right, I'm going to uh, cast for Detect Enemies. Go. Sure. Um, cast it. Uh, so that was at Force Level 1. Oh, Force level four. Force four. Yeah. Uh, what magic are you? What magic am I three? Okay, so that'd be physical drain. Um, one success. So what do I roll to resist? We had this discussion last time. I can't remember what it was. Oh. It might be just willpower plus counter spelling. Um... Pseudo, can you tell if any of the weapons are activated or anything like that when you do those checks? Or is that just, like, purely for weapons tags in the area? Well, like I can RFIDs? see that they're, they're wireless, so they're active in so far that they're turned on and they're connected to the Matrix. Okay, but are you, you know, sort of stopping the van oh. for a moment? You focus your, your, you know, your magical essence through yourself and outwards and you start, like, just doing a cursory glance at everyone's mind to see if they are A, aware of you, and B, if they have hostile intentions in that regard. Uh, you don't notice anyone. Um, who has it in for you? Just the troll. <laughs> the troll, again, there's that slight sort of resonation. It's not a, like he definitely intends to harm you right now, but he certainly has aggressive feelings towards you. Um, but other than that, you know, again. <laughs> I'm, to, I'm just going to roll them. Um, this time, though, you do just... get maybe a slight sense of pseudo that pseudo's a little bit pissed with you. You're not sure? <laughs> uh, that was just a resisted drain. You cast it force four. So how much drain is it? It's not much, is it? Uh, two. Two, yeah, you resist uh, it. Yeah, two. Yeah. Um, so you resist the drain from your spell, you, you open your eyes. No enemies that you can detect. 
All right, gentlemen, what do we want to do now? I got a bad well, feeling about this. I'm going to ping the contact. Say that every time. Um, I don't like getting shot. I have a strong allergy to it. <laughs> You're like I the just... Matrix. <laughs> but you know what happens when I do get hit? I explode just like a water balloon. So I have to get out of the way. And to be fair, Pug, there are enough guns in there that they'd be able to make you explode like a water balloon. So I'm with blowback on this. I'm... How about you uh, call your guy up on the phone and see if he'll come out here maybe? And then we'll just keep an eye on the gun signals or something? I don't want to be overly paranoid about this. But I don't know, when people bring up rewards before we've even talked to them, I start getting nervous. <laughs> While yeah. all that's happening, can I see any security surveillance equipment around? Just general cameras, uh... just icons for that? Icons for them. Um, yeah. None that are not running hidden. There can, of course, be ones running hidden that you might not be able to see. Okay. Uh, you'd have to make a major exception for that. Yeah. Um, what, just as a, a general kind of law thing that my character would know, but I don't necessarily know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Britain has a lot of traffic cameras. There's cameras everywhere. Would it still be the same? In uh, the far yes future? and no. Uh, there are a lot of cameras yeah. in places where people won't vandalize them, but in places like Southside and Lamb Containment Zone, Okay. Uh, people generally see them as target practice, um, right. so they've kind of stopped, to an extent, putting a lot of cameras up. They sometimes yeah, put up hidden sense. ones that are more temporary in nature near intersections and stuff, but also, generally, eventually when they get spotted, they get used as target practice. Um, That's it. Um, since the icons are there, do I, can I um, just um, interrogate the icons for details on the types of weapons that are there? Sure. Uh, make a make exception for each hit. You can ask me a question about the icons. Um, matrix perception. Let me bring up my uh, wee cheat sheet. And uh, that would be matrix protection is computer plus data processing. Are we going to do this me or what? Yeah, they said they wanted it done fast. I... Well, we've already spent two hours waiting on the van. I'm sure yeah. an extra five, ten minutes isn't going to be much of an issue. Yeah. Might as well do this the right way. There's a lot of guns in there. Yeah. Five successes. Okay, you can ask me five things. What would you like to ask? Okay, uh, I would like to know uh, if there are any weapons, more uh, like uh, military spec weapons. Uh, sure. You you investigate the uh, the strength of the icons and the threat level, uh, and one of them does uh, resonate as a, uh, a I think it's an AS technology single shot uh, rocket launcher. Okay. Are there? What's the av? Uh, well, okay. Uh, I'll I'll be a bit more specific rather than trying to like game away around the questions. Are there any mm. uh, like rifles, like assault rifles, things bigger than pistols in there amongst the weapons? Uh, sure. Uh, I think you have to target them at each question, each individual device. But uh, yeah, okay. yeah, you, um, you can use a couple of actions and you detect that yeah. there is a variety of different weapons in there, but there are a few assault rifles as well. Um, there are a few assault rifles, there are a few shotguns. They require there any pistols. Okay. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to target the icons, considering I can see dozens of icons, but yeah. I've got no... no Like, icons usually look like something. Yeah. Um, I mean, these, so... these icons, someone has masked uh, a lot of them, uh, yeah. and with your number of hits, you can just eventually get to that. So I'm just going to tell you, because you've got lots of time. Yeah. You can just go into VR and do this forever. Uh, and uh, they have been masked, a lot of them. Some of them haven't. There are a lot of pistols that still look like pistols, but there's certainly a few that are assault rifles that have been like hidden as portable music players, or the one that's actually like, labeled as fish. It's not a fish. It's, a, it's an assault rifle. Uh, it's actually a, a compact rifle. assault rifle that's been cut down, uh, this one. But yeah, no. Um, there's, someone's done some work on masking these. Not an expert job to your Technomancer eye. Yeah. Okay. Um, and since I could just keep rolling Matrix Perception and finding this stuff out, yeah. I'll just ask one last general question. Yeah. Given, like, that generally they would have icons to try and indicate um, like how many sort of mods and stuff like that. Are there any things that would catch my eye? Like that is some serious kit. That's got like a smart link system. It's got it's um, you know, a few of them do a smart links, particularly the more stuff. powerful guns uh, in the group. You also notice that there are a couple of um, warhawks uh, that have uh, smart links on them, um, and you also notice that there are a pair of very high grade cyber arms. 
Okay. They're not just gangers in there. There's there's some someone's chromed up. We've got what I some heavier weapons. There's a rocket launcher in there. This is this is not just small arms. There's a lot of small arms there. Did but... you say rocket launcher? Yes. So the question becomes mm. What did the guy sound what did the guy sound like that contacted you, Caber? A crazy fucking Russian. Like is there's definitely one of the Russian mob. I mean we just done a job for the Russian mob. The Red Four. Did we though? Because the guy yeah. we contacted last time was an orc and he wasn't Russian. He was a troll. No, so it... he was a troll. He says was he that, a Russian yeah, but troll. The last Mr. Johnson says <laughs> that it was four. Like that, that's why we were Make getting the guy. It was a the charisma mode. plus. Uh, what's what's to read someone? It's. it's uh, judge intentions. Yeah, but it's not exactly judge intentions. My concern here is that we ran against the mob yeah. while he said we were running for the mob, and charisma now these plus... guys are kind of pissed about it. Charisma plus intuition. White Vori were involved. Supposedly. The guy that we rescued. Vladimir Koslaw or something. Yeah, Koslov, <laughs> I think it was. Uh, Kaber, um, the troll seemed very corporate and pretty well spoken with a sort of a generic English, uh, British accent. Uh, maybe a little bit more southern, particularly, uh, sort of a more cut glass British accent. However, it's possible that since that is a very just generic accent, that was just, you know, specifically targeted just general uh, cut glass English, that it's possible someone was putting that on. But other than that, you wouldn't be able to notice. All right, guys. Cable, get, get a message on this comic asking how many people are going to know, contact you on that comic? How many people are going to know to contact me on the comic? Like, no one. Like the only the only person that I've contacted is, um, like my my personal friends and the Mister Johnson. Like that was that. All right. So decision time. Do we bug out or do we go in? How's everybody feeling about it? I'm. I say we go in. Okay. Like if you guys don't want to go, like the uh, pug can come with me. I mean, he's a big scary guy. At which oh, point I'll you hear, uh, Gaber. on the side of the van. Shit. <laughs> on which side? Whose side is it? Uh, it's, it's on the, the pavement side, so that it's basically on the door. Okay. Come on, face. Oh, come on! <laughs> go face right, down that I'm... rocket launcher. Uh, I'll go to... What icons are just outside right now that I can see? Uh, there are two comlinks, um, there are also two pistols, and there is a shotgun. Okay. Uh, along with general other stuff, like there are some shoes there that are reporting that they're half through their wear cycle. There's a belt saying that uh, the person needs to lose a bit of weight because it's on a higher setting than it used to be on, and a few other things like that. There's also <laughs> something that's reporting that uh, their meal is digesting properly and that the sausages are, uh, yeah. There's a lot of crap out there as well. Two unknowns, pistols, a shotgun. Future is rough. When your belt calls you fat, it's brutal. All right, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna oh. pull out my, my pistol and wait for Caber to open the door. Right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to slide open the door. Okay, uh, you slide open the door and you see uh, two humans, um, both uh, wearing suits. Um, not the best pinstripe of suits. Puggy, are you pointing a gun at them? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, they aren't carrying their pistols in their hands or anything, if you're worrying. They've they've got their hands at their sides, and uh, one of them turns to you and just says, Dart, I was you? expecting uh, Kaber, because he opened the door. Um, I was expecting a different colored van, but are you Kaber? That's right, yep. Dart, we've been asked to get you inside. You are a little bit late. All right, do you mind if my... Uh... My friend comes with me. That well, uh, we were expecting three others. All right. Um. Well, there's only two with me just now. The other one's back at home. That. Oh. Uh, well. Uh, 
let me just and he just goes silent for a certain moment and you can see that he's sub vocalizing um and then he he speaks up about 10 seconds 20 seconds later and says da 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 he's fine um Try and get the person here as soon as possible. We do have job offer that would be good to see all of you and be able to gauge your intentions and your reliability. We'd like to know who we are doing business with, but we've said more than we should. Get inside, please, and we can uh, start on. All right, okay. so I guess we're going to a meet. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm, I'm just going to silently salute my comrades as I lie yeah. down in the back of the van, just yeah. cross my hands over my chest and just... I got to look at my face that says, here we go again, but I get out of the car and I'm going to follow him in. <laughs> yeah, I'll okay. follow him in, but I'm going to keep uh, my hands inside the little pocket on my hoodie. So the one so that spoke to you uh, moves, you know, a few meters back and lets you exit the van. The other one holding the door open for you, nice and politely. Um, when you well, exit the van, he sticks his head in and sees uh, <laughs> Sudo laying in the back of the van. Eyes closed, appearing asleep. This is one of yours. Yeah, he's just knocked out just now. That Power nap. Oh, okay. And he gets into the van. <laughs> what is Watch wrong with butt. him? He he goes over and he like taps Sudo on the cheek. Uh, Sudo. What the hell is don't flinch when tapped on the cheek test? Uh, I would imagine that would be performance if there's such a skill. Yeah. I don't yeah. have make, it, but... Make it willpower plus performance. Because it'd be willpower the willpower to just, like, not react as well. Okay. Uh, you will uh, default on that, so it'd be minus one performance. Yeah. So, just will. Oh, the things you get me into, Kaba. <laughs> It'd be best if I just left you. Uh, right. He's going to use Group Edge. What's Group Edge? Uh, enemies who aren't important enough to have Edge have a Group Edge that's shared between all enemies right, in the pool. Okay. This also applies to friendly troops and so on as well. Uh, so yeah, he, uh, he for a moment sort of buys it and then sees you sort of half wink as your, your eyelids <laughs> flutter. He goes, no, he's awake now. Uh, get up, little man. He hearing that, hearing uh, that, do the sit up. Sit, bolt upright and just go <gasps> and uh who the hell are you no, 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 i'm sure the big surprise uh come on we have job <laughs> to do he, he waves you out of the van also he then looks around you said you had all your kit in here right like you all said you know we've got all of our main guns no nope, yeah. i said i've not brought anything except the things i said i had yeah um, but it, still in there from the last job like yeah yeah uh, everyone else said that they got all their, their main weapons and they kept them in the van for these sort of things, right? Mm -hmm. For just a meet like this? Well, you, you generally said that you, you keep your main kit in the vans. Um, unless, unless there's something you, you deliberately would have left at home. Now they know we're well prepared. It's okay, guys. So yeah, basically, it's, like, it's the assault cannon right. there. <laughs> if that's part of our main kit, then yes. Okay, uh, he looks around, he sees a lot of assault rifles. He also sees an assault cannon on the wall. Now, bear in mind the assault cannon fires like 20, like an inch, inch large shell. Basically like a small tank cannon, effectively, that's portable. Uh, more popular with trolls, because no one else can really carry it, obviously. Um, he looks slightly shocked and impressed. Uh, he looks down at Sudo, who was the guy there, and goes, That is these yours. I'm simply going to look at him. I'm just going to stare at him for a moment. As if to give him time to process what he's asking. Ah, Shall troll. He has yes. good taste. I've always wanted one of these. And he motions you out of the van. Yeah, I, I get out of the van. Can we close there, the there freaking was door behind this guy? no point in me trying to bluff that. It's like, <laughs> that thing is bigger than me. <laughs> Do you think it's mine? They don't have very good logic. Uh, he closes the door, and uh, the front guy motions you to go inside. I wirelessly lock the van up and everything, just in case it needed to be stated. 
Okay. Probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh, so he maneuvers I, you around some. Yeah. Can I do a judge intentions to see like if that guy's interested in our van? Sure, go for it. <laughs> we are really paranoid. He is interested yeah, in course. the kit inside the van. He doesn't it's look like shadow he, run. He doesn't look like he's going to steal it anytime soon, but he is right. certainly interested and impressed. Um, okay. Actually, more impressed than he's trying to let on right now. Um, but yeah, no, no, they are like you have an assault cannon in, in, a, in your van. Like that's kind of what's going through their heads right now, and they're, they're obviously giving the troll a little bit more of a wide berth as you would. You normally give a troll a little bit of a wide berth because you know they're pretty tough. This is a troll who just has an assault cannon in a van. Um, but yeah. So, uh... Kaba gets a, a message just pushed to his comment from Pseudo saying, uh, from me, rather, saying, in before, David was actually in charge of some massive criminal organization, and you've now got a hit on all of us. Well done. That's Beatrice. Now, there's, there's no way that that guy was in charge of a criminal organization. He was going to, like, phone Lone Star, like... <laughs> Ain't fooling me. Ain't fooling me, Sido. Just calling it now. Calling it now. We're all gonna be skinned alive. And <laughs> by the way, Kaber, to say that sold. back, you have to. You're gonna have to say. <laughs> We're gonna have to type it. Yeah. So like, you've got your hands at your side, <laughs> furiously trying to type while not looking too conspicuous, and one well, the guards gives you a little bit of a look, but just keep um, my APM up, guys. Deception. <laughs> I won't wake him roll it deception because he can just buy the hits and he'd be fine. Uh, <laughs> Caber is insane. Uh, but yeah, they, they walk you past like some of the piled up uh, laundry machines, um, some boxes there, and they go, oh, wait. Um, one of them stops for a second and pulls out his comm link, presses a button, and the laundrette, uh, like the dryers and the washing machines nearby, start spinning up. Uh, Pseudo, you'll notice that this makes uh, two points of jammer. Um, basically noise because large turbine uh, electric motors causing uh, electromagnetic interference maybe deliberately unshielded for this purpose uh, and then they go oh, duh, uh, mind if we do pat down do that holds out his arms okay let's go through this. everyone I do then. similarly yay okay so pseudo you have is it a light pistol no I told you I'm bringing nothing but me oh Nothing, nothing, okay. Yeah, uh, I literally said I've not brought sorry. any weapons. Uh, they, they pat you down? Nothing there. Fine. You... Kayla, you've got your holdout in your suit that has a concealed holster, right? Yes. It's minus six to, to notice that. Yep. Dad, please. He holds out his hand. This thing's just not worth me taking around with me. Here you go. To be fair, he got really lucky on that yeah. roll. <laughs> One yeah, dice yeah. and he got a success. Yeah, he had, uh, it's basically minus two for the concealed holster, minus four for hold. Minus, minus four, four for the holdout. Yeah. Yeah. Well, minus four for holdout. Yeah. So he had one dice. Um, unlucky. Uh, Pug, you are carrying. Is it a light pistol? Light pistol, concealed holster. Yeah. Light pistol concealed holster, that's a uh, minus four. Um, minus one, because I said the hoodie's a minus one. So it's minus five. Uh, does it have the silencer on it, by the way? Because general silencers make the gun a lot bigger. Um, if you store it with the silencer attached, it will give them an extra dice effectively. Yes, it does. In which case, three dice. Dot, dot, dot. Maybe they're still kind of impressed and a little bit wary of going full hands-on with the troll. Um, yeah, because you might have another assault cannon in yeah, under there. Yeah, is that an assault gun that you're pleased to see me? Uh, he waves you past. Uh, blowback. I've got my coat, which is a minus two, and then I've got the concealable holster, which I think is another minus two, so it should be a minus four altogether, I think. And what gun are you wielding? Uh, Colt L36. It's a light pistol. Light pistol. So minus two, minus two, minus two, that's minus six. Da da da, you are fine. Um, <laughs> Literally the only person who could call this caper. <laughs> the weakest of all the guns there. And the I only one blame Yep. Yeah, but he can talk himself out of a jam. It's fine. 
I'm yeah, too pretty. He's too to pretty to shoot. He's too pretty. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. By the way, it's I'm worth noting you have a an integral suppressor in the gun itself uh, that doesn't add to the concealability features. Just in case you've written it down as just suppressor rather than integrated, if you have one. Uh, but yeah, they they basically the t guy takes the hold up pistol, puts it inside his his jacket, um, into a pocket somewhere in there, and uh, he motions you to the stairs downwards to the basement. Down to the basement I go. Following down. Okay. So you head downwards. And you find yourself in a room which has a couple of doors off to one side and off to the other side. And you can see quite easily there are some packed crates nearby and a few other things. And there's also a few dried blood stains on the ground here and there. As, as we move down, um, how far are we going down? Like, how far away are we now? Uh, you're probably about three meters underground. Yeah. Um, for your purposes, in terms of noise rating, you're now away from the, the like, the yeah, laundry machines. Uh, yeah. But you are now under, like, you know, a good few feet of uh, concrete and steel. So that will be a, just a, a one noise rating. Um, so but not I'm, too bad. Do I notice any icons down here, especially in the crate or behind yeah. the crate? Yeah, in fact, one of the crates is uh, labeled and it says, uh, as technology property thereof, um, highly dangerous explosive, handle with care. And inside it is a rocket launcher. Right, okay. Which is currently on, but it's on standby. It's, it's not, you know, using most of the functions, but it yeah. is able it's, to be it's called. Just, it's just yeah. turned on, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can see that there are a, probably about four Is it the rocket guards. launcher that I saw earlier? Yeah, yeah. It's just exactly the same one. Uh, there are four guards down here um, wearing a mishmash sort of assortment of suits and uh, equipped with shotguns, assault rifles. One of them has uh, a machine pistol. Um, and they're all looking at you, but not, you know, within intentions, as far as you can tell, at a glance, but they are very interested in you. They've obviously been waiting for you. Um, one of them is an orc, one of them is a dwarf, the other two are human. And at the far end, um, on a pretty rickety wooden armchair that's maybe coming apart a little bit. Uh, you notice that there is a human with heavy cotton wool padding and bandages around each of his shoulders and these magnificent, sparkling new chrome arms that are just like, they are they are works of art in how much they are just pure bling. Um, just so well sheened and little intersecting plates that sort of make up the, the different joints and so on. Um... And there is there is a, a person there who is tending to the wounds and so on that have sort of formed where the the joints have been attached, and he's got a drip going into uh, him somewhere, and uh, he sees you come in. Do I see all the icons of medical equipment, like the drip? And yeah, yeah. Like you can you can now see now you're underground. They're not particularly high rating because they're designed to be used yeah. in local environment, so that's why you can see them outside. Uh, but there is effectively a wireless rating one um, drip, and there's a couple of other things attached, but. Nothing, nothing fancy. It's just these guys basically on fluids at the moment. By the way, is, is anyone suppressants. in the room near the crate, especially the, the one with the bazooka? Well, I say bazooka, the rocket launcher in it. Uh, no one, anyone near the crate, you say? Yeah. Um, no, effectively Roughly they are... The about. crates are behind behind the stairs, effectively, as you come down, right. and they are the other side where the room extends a little bit further on. Okay. okay. Um, well, everyone's going to get uh, just a quick arrow pushed to their comm links, just, just the team, as pseudo marks that crate firstly rocket launcher second if stuff gets bad don't be stood near this okay um also then your pens next to the rocket launcher armed it's it's not actually armed no but that's what it will be if stuff starts okay. going bad uh you can tell the uh, quick interrogation because this is effectively story time and not every 30 okay. seconds um it doesn't have a shell loaded uh when impacking oh, okay. crates a single shot rocket launcher doesn't tend to come for shell loaded effectively it's one of these rpg type things you put the thing on the end and then right, right. It. I, I was thinking it was like a disposable sort of uh know, yeah yeah i mean it is effectively thing. that it's basically that but, but cheaper but you have yet. to put the shell okay. on the end first um right no worries. so yeah yeah uh this guard the arm thing then but yeah yeah um the guy at the end noticing you Gets up very quickly, pulls the uh, the drip out of his uh, back, which the doctor goes. Which oh, you does he notice? Does, is um, he you all particularly. Oh, all. Okay. He just just gestures to the group. Pulls pulls the drip out of his back, uh, which was sort of going up behind his shoulder blade, and uh, the, the doctor's like, no, says something. None of you speak Russian, do you? I don't think no, so. I think I, I have Japanese. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. My 
and the guy just um, walks forwards. Pseudo pushes to Kaber's calm link. Now is that time for that spell that you didn't want to use before? It only works if I'm talking direct to him. Again, ah, right. you're doing that. Yes, um, I am. I am showing my right. APM off. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the the guy walks forwards and arms wide open and goes, "Dar, ah, my friends," and you notice that this guy you actually liberated uh, from the van a few days ago. It's Coleslaw. Wow. Nice. Wow. Uh, okay. How's it? He, he How's is it completely going? completely recognizable, is he? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you did have some information on him, you picked up his file, you have a, a picture of him. Um, obviously, he's a little bit, sort of got that sort of patterned bruising around, you know, all around where his arm was effectively shot off. It's going down very quickly now. He seems to have maybe got some quite good medical attention from what you can just gather at a glance. Um, that he's, you know, even walking and talking uh, three days later and having a double arm transplant. Um, but he, he just walks over and goes, Dar, I have seen uh, what you did, and I'm very pleased uh, that you managed to uh, get me out of there, even with Lone Star's somewhat brutality. I have to thank you, and he walks over and he, he you know, shakes your hand uh, one by one, starting with uh, Kaba. Um, he goes through you all, it's, and then go, yeah? It's good to see that you're up and about, and you actually have the ability to shake my hand. Da, da, and he... he, he puts his, his, actually it's his left arm that was uh, shot off during the actual raid and he turns the arm around and you can see that these little intersecting plates around the wrist sort of twist and uh, fried basically like normal hands would have sort of a joint there that you could like easily get at and stuff but this, this hand is both armoured and covered to prevent it from you know grit and stuff getting in there but also at the same time it offers some good ballistic protection um, you know, that, well I got the chance for an upgrade and then he pulls his right hand up and uh, if at the time you would have noticed you didn't actually get particularly close to check you would notice that his arm was kind of didn't move like when when they held him and they moved him around his arm was just stationary oh, okay. yeah. um but he you know sort of shows you his uh, right hand as well they're both a matching set and i notice that it does say in very small engraved writing uh evo on the side um because that, well, uh, I basically wanted to thank you for, you know, pulling me out of that. Uh, it was very good of you at uh, a fairly short notice. I hear you got into quite a firefight and got me out, even considering the uh, unfortunate circumstances of it. Did you see the, the footage? The da, footage da, da, you get shot have, by Lone Star? We have our contacts. I got a hold of some Jesus. of the footage. And, uh, there I was going to tell him, I can't believe you made it, Coleslaw. I you look believe. better than the last time we saw you, man. You're looking good right now. <laughs> he sort of winces slightly at Pug, um, but sort of shakes it off. He goes, da, da, well, uh, luckily I have fairly good contact for medical services, and uh, it was uh, not uh, not something that was completely terrible at the end of the day. I've been looking after these arms for quite some time, wanting to uh, have a chance to use them. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to uh, firstly celebrate, but before that, uh, I believe that uh, thank you to you, uh, I have been able to actually get hold of something that I've been looking for, and I think that you have uh, actually something that has been vexing you for a while, and I hear on the street that you've been looking for a couple of people. Uh, I might be able to provide you with those. So, firstly, and he, he gestures you to come forwards, and uh, a couple of his henchmen just walk in behind and bring in effectively this long sofa, which you see has got, like, metal stripping, like, added to the legs and so on, so that it probably might be able to support a troll's weight. Um, basically, this sort of four-leg <laughs> sofa is now an eight-leg sofa. sofa. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's got, it's got eight legs now. The penis. central four are all made of, like, metal uh, corrugated, like, down the center as well. Um, yeah. Should be able to take your weight. Da, da, sit, sit, sit. Okay, I oblige. Yep. Pseudo. Sitting sounds good. That is, I sit down. just sit down happily. Shove Cabra so, a little uh, bit. My, throughout the discussion, my, my eyes have kind of been, whilst they've been moving around, I've been more or less aware of my surroundings. I've not been completely focusing, and I am still very intently trying to analyze and just quietly interrogate all the icons I can see. I'm basically looking for explosives right now. Uh, sure, in which case, uh, you notice that there are a number of detonators in one of the rooms off of here. Um, the, these detonators aren't uh, activated. They have probably been attached to an explosive, but the suspect that there probably is explosive somewhere nearby, considering there are a load of just tiny little detonators uh, in, in a few boxes over there. Uh, you also do notice a couple of other interesting things. Firstly, 
Uh, you notice the RFID tag and broadcasting like emergency responder from a, uh, a Lone Star personnel beacon. Um, unfortunately, this beacon has been shielded. Um, you don't know how, but you suspect because it's only effectively a rating one device now, you would know that they're going to be more than a rating one device if it's a personnel beacon. Um, it comes from the other room. Right. Uh, am I... Uh, usually I would need to roll a, a matrix trace action to try and find out the physical location, but I just kind of know it's in the, uh, the room adjoining this one. It's the, effectively, because the, the signal is petering out so quickly, you would just know that it's All right, probably I've got in a, nearby. an idea that it has to be close by. Yeah, really and that they also, it. you know, you, you have so much time as a technomancer to be able to over three seconds every time do this trace thing that I won't make you really bother about it until we get into a situation where it matters. Just yeah. because you can buy hits and you would be like, I yeah. have it in one turn anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's in the other room. Okay. Um, the room other than the explosives one. Okay. Because da da da. Well, um... I was hoping that you could do a spot of work for me. I have need of people I can trust to be able to do a little bit of work and take care of some, you know, as we say, business. Um, is that something that might be of interest to you? Oh yeah, definitely. Da. We're always on the lookout for work. Excellent. Um, now, of course, I appreciate what you did for me before, but I cannot fully trust you just yet until you prove your loyalty and prove you are not maybe stooges or, you know, feds or whatever. I'm sure you appreciate this in your line of work. Yeah, of course. Da, da. Uh, and he, he pulls out um, a, a Ruger Super Warhawk. And he, he holds yeah. it up. And then he spins it in his hand, catches it barrel first, and holds it out to Kaba, since Kaba was the one who answered that. And goes, duh. Well, uh, let Sudo's me see if I can. pushing a message to Cable right now. I suspect you're gonna, you're about to be asked to execute someone. Uh, he says as that overlay pops in your vision. Duh. Well, uh, we have a saying. How about you scratch my, my back and I will scratch yours. And uh, one of the doors opens on the side. This one leading to Lone Star uh, Beacon. And While this notice... is happening, I'm just gonna message. I'm gonna message Sido and just ask if there's anything recording that he can see around here. Uh, now, bear in mind, you only now have one hand free, but you can try and type this out, although you are, like, sitting right in front of this guy. It's a little bit rude to do that if you want. Uh, I've got nimble fingers. It will still be like... Uh, <laughs> I mean, imagine trying to type on a keyboard with, like, one hand. That's effectively what you're doing now. If you want to try and do that, I the other one's on that. the Ruger. Uh... You yeah, wanna? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. still going to give it a go. Yep, what do you want me to roll? <laughs> I'll roll for it. No, you, you're just doing it. Like, that's fine. You don't need to roll to use oh, your hands okay. to type out a word, but One it's guy. just going to look a little bit. Um, And brought in through that door is... As... Yeah? Oh, I was going to say, as Kaber starts typing, and given the situation, I'm going to just sort of speak up in meat space and say, uh, he's just trying to come off hot sim addiction he's it's just his way of, of trying to deal with that don't don't worry about it it's a bit weird but raw deception okay uh what is this actually is it actually just flat out a skill called deception I'm not is serious. it deception or con i think it's con it's con yeah it'll be con yeah so, is that I roll the skill plus the attribute attached to it? Yeah, it'd be charisma. Just, yeah. yeah. I have to drop that manually. That'll be mental, or actually social. And you have four dice for this. You get one successful hit. I'll drop a point of edge on that, actually, as well. Okay. Reroll failures. I should have said that before you managed to roll, but... Uh, you get two to my three. Still uh, the guy looks nice. at you. 
he's not buying it, quite obviously, but he doesn't say anything. Anyway, in through the door uh, is brought by two guys with their arms sort of looped under his shoulders. Um, someone in Lone Star uniform. This is a human. Um, he's got blood, like, streaking down his face from his nose and mouth. Um, one of his, like, actually both of his legs seem to be at really odd angles that sort of imply that either something in his lower leg is broken or possibly his kneecap. Um, his, his uniform is tattered. Uh, in places it's soiled. Uh, it is, is covered in blood stains, And uh, he's dumped on the floor about a meter and a half away. And he goes... From this distance, can I... Has he got a comlink or anything of his around him except for that little beacon? Nope. He does not have a comlink It's just anything. a beacon. Am I able... Is there any information I could interrogate from that beacon? Uh, sure. Uh, it would be encrypted. It would just be a, a beacon that's transmitting a location, but you could interrogate the beacon if you wanted. Um, Are we all going into the room, or is it just... We find that... Oh, you're just sitting down. The guy's being brought into the room next to you and, like, just unceremoniously dropped on the floor, which ah. kind of makes an awkward squishing sound as his face hits the floor, implying that oh, something there was good. already broken. Um, uh, my be... character has a bias, so the audience knows against the police. And so my character is going to laugh and be like, oh, you caught yourself a couple of piggies, huh? That well, one very special piggy. Uh, you need to do <laughs> basically. You need to do a crack file. Like it's quite easily. It's got this uh, encrypted uh, information in it. But I just want you to do a, effectively a crack yeah. file, or you could effectively sleaze your way in if you wanted. Uh, oh bloody hell! Ever since I updated to Windows 10, my Adobe keeps crashing. If I don't do anything with it for a while, so I keep losing my cheat sheet. Annoying. Right, Hashtag uh, blame Windows 10. No, blame Kaber. Blame Kaber. Damn it! One hundred. He's responsible for Windows Kaber. 10. Yeah. Probably. Yep. Okay. Right. That would be my hacking and logic. I don't think patellas are supposed to be obtuse. It seems painful. <laughs> I'm like, <"Nyeh."> yeah. <laughs> that doesn't bend that way. <laughs> Because you got one success. Or is that... No, that was the edge roll. This is it. Yeah. One, su one success anyway. Uh, okay, well, I, I will roll the protection on the file. Uh, no. And... Ooh. You're in AR at the moment, so there's no downside to that except for your Overwatch score would start. Yep. Um, do you want to do anything one about that? One point for that, isn't it? Uh, it's, is it net, I think it's hits, not net hits. I think it's just net, it's hits, so that'd be two. Two points. Yeah. Do you want to restart your persona? Um, yeah, may as well. Yeah, like, effectively. There's, there's like, literally no reason not yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the intense purposes of anyone watching, effectively, his internal device, which is his technomancer ability, just reboots his, in his brain, uh, and, and his overwatch score disappears, so... For no a moment, longer. I attain Nirvana, and then I'm back in this shithole of a place. Actually, for a moment <sighs> for you, it's just really, really awkward, because you feel really antsy when your device isn't on. So, uh... But yeah, you, you, you just very momentarily a little bit, and then you're fine again. Uh, but yeah, so, uh... He gestures at the guy that just got brought in. He goes, duh, duh. Uh, you may recognize him. He has been a, uh... A recent, uh, you know, somewhat of a celebrity amongst people who've been watching that footage uh, of your uh, of your run, and you will now does, recognize. Does that... he have an eye? Uh, no, 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 no. He he has his eyes. Okay. Uh, you maybe now recognize that if you look in the right angle, this is the guy with the shotgun who took that guy's arm off. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> we get to tie oh, up loose ends. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. Loose ends. Now, Kaber, if you wouldn't mind, uh, uh, you scratch my back. Oh, of course not. So I'm going to pick the, uh, the Super Warhawk. I'm going to point it at the guy's head. The guy looks and up I'm at gonna... you, stares into your eyes, spits <laughs> blood. Which doesn't quite make it to you, but uh, hits the the quite large target of the troll in between, and sort of hits his leg. I'm just gonna fucking shake. pig, man. 
I was going to shake my head and you. just pop one off right in you his head. Fu- sure. Uh, roll. But I will say, effectively, you get uh, the bonuses of uh, three turns worth of aiming, because you could do that. Um, and I'd say it's like not even a cord shot to really shoot his head from this angle. So effectively, just roll just in case you glitch. Um, While he's doing that, I'm just. What do you gonna... want me to? How many do you want me to roll? A- I've got eleven normally. Plus pistols. Uh, it's a heavy pistol in case that makes a difference. For speciality. No, uh, plus three to aim. And then just roll it. That's fourteen. Yeah. Let's roll it. Five successes. Well done. Uh, bang. <laughs> like just entry wound about yay big and just. The back of his head just explodes. The entire floor behind him is just this one big sort of slick red sheet with little chunks in it. He goes, Dad, thank you very much. And he holds his hand out for the gun. I hand back the gun. Dad. Well, uh... Is the, is the um, beacon, was the beacon still pinging or is that stopped now? No, it's, it's still pinging. Okay. Uh, can we just say that I'm going to keep trying to get that success and rebooting every time I fail? Sure. Uh, a few seconds later, you, you get the success, and it gives you, you know, his name, uh, his rank, um, how long he's been on the force, and it gives you a badge number, which badge you all number. note down. His, his name is William Kelly, if you care. Um, it also gives you a next of kin, at least his sister, Laurie Kelly. Who is? Your sister. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are points. I think there I know your brother from the other day. Beyond <laughs> which. Drink sometime. Oh, There's God. a special place in hell for you, okay, but a special I'm really sorry, place. I just I heard about your brother, I've seen you on the news, it's, uh, it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing. Anyway, uh, the, the, the guys who number? brought him in, uh, the badge number. Can uh, I just write down badge number? Just write for... down badge yeah. number. <laughs> I could make up an alphanumeric sequence, but then I'd have to write it down as well. Um, it's fine, it's fine. And the two guys who brought him in just haul him away and chuck him on summarily through the door and goes, Duh, well, you've scratched my back, it'll be only fair of me to scratch yours. And those two guys come back in with two individuals who are equally beaten up, uh, bloodied nose. One of them has a leg like sticking out almost 90 degrees to their body. These two individuals, you guys will remember from the, the uh, test session we did where they crossed you over and tried to kill you. Oh, yes. Yes. One of them has like a revenge. broken jaw sort of twisted at 30 degrees, um, unable to really vocalize anything. And uh, the guy in front of you picks up the pistol. You hand it back to him and goes, Duh, well, thank you very much. It's always good. And he just points it and just shoots bang, bang off to the side, just one through each head. Um, quite easily. No problem. Wow. Not even really blinking an eye. Uh, this guy just at casual motion just kills the two guys. They fall limp. The guys who brought them in just carry them, take them through the door. Fair enough. I'm just going to nudge blow back and say, I like this coleslaw guy. <laughs> He's got style. I'm feeling it too. They didn't happen to have the money that they owed us on them, did they? That, that unfortunately not. I believe that they uh, <laughs> would either have spent that or they did somewhere else. But uh, well, They probably I didn't have it to begin them. with. They were they the right people, yes. I didn't just like kill two hobos. Oh, yeah. that, that'd be awkward. Definitely. Excellent. While well, well, that's going on, Sudo's going to be doing a matrix search. For Officer William Kelly, with that badge number, looking generally for any information regarding his sure, uh, make family, a... specifically dependents. Okay. Uh, matrix search. Uh, minus one because of the noise. Yeah. So compute plus intuition limited by your data processing. Um, and I have a specialization with computers for matrix search, so that'll be seven. It's going to take a moment to wipe off the cop's spit and uh, make sure to leave a little red stain on Kaber's nice suit. Um, when when I have a limit, but yeah. it's based on a skill. Oh, no, sorry. It's based on data processing, not on yeah. computers. Sorry. Yeah. Never mind. Thank you, though. Two successes. Um, so basically, you can find information, but it takes a while, and then you can d- mm-hmm. reduce that by a step by the number of hits you get. So I would say that this will take you a few minutes and it, you will only find out when you leave the premises if you spend one hit, uh, but the other hit will get you effectively a next of kin. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. 
So uh, that'll, that'll take a little while, but it will come back to you. Um, he goes, Duh. well, now that we've got that sorted, I would like to offer you a job. Uh, I have a, a missing Decker. He is, owes me money, and unfortunately we give him certain perks of the job when working for us, and now he is run off with some of our gear and we would like it returned to us were you willing to do this uh, bit of collection sounds fine what's the uh, what's the wage no, the wage will be call it 1000 each for taking the run and successfully finding where he is and then if you manage to obtain our gear and come back and bring it all back let's call that uh, an extra 2000 each so make it 3000 per head You make it up to an even 15,000. Sounds good. Any justification behind that? Or you did that what you just say? That's it. You make okay. it up to an even 15,000, we'll be able to do it. I mean, we we helped you out. We, we got you back alive. We even had to spend an awful lot of resources making sure you didn't die on us. Uh, well, you were paid for that, and uh, for that I'm grateful, but I'm now offering you a consistent line of credit and a job working for a particularly growing business venture. I'll tell you what, Vosilov, because it's you, we'll do it for the 12. Anyone else, and I'd be pushing. I push I a message to Sudo's... Big call. Nah, to it's Sudo's, okay, I like uh... you. I like you. So, so Blueback pulls up his little thing and he's sending a little message across as well. <laughs> Is that what you were doing? You just no, I got sub vocalized. So oh, sub vocal. Voice to text. Right, right. I, I make a perception check for that, but it is like a threshold three, I believe. But, uh. Okay. Yes. He notices um, you, but doesn't care. I push a message to Kaba saying. You've agreed to it now, but it would be useful for us to know what this gear is so that we can plan accordingly, because gear is incredibly fake. And don't start to typing on your VR like an idiot. Just ask the question. Just so read what, the um, sentence. <laughs> what type of gear are we looking at? That, well, uh, we offered him certain perks and gave him access to certain gear, and in return we required a certain amount of let me say digital uh, expertise in our business um we like to uh, employ local talent where we can um unfortunately we did offer him uh, two particular items that we would like back uh he has an implanted deck that we would particularly like to be uh returned to us and he also has a pretty nice pair of cyber eyes that we would like back and returned in one piece my eyebrow noticeably arches at the implanted cyber deck being mentioned that, that's literally the reaction, but it, it's, it's definitely a, I'm paying attention to this, and I have a vague idea of how much that would cost. I ask, where should we start searching for this kid? You got like a last known address or location? That as well, I can give you his uh, last known address. Unfortunately, we looked there, and unfortunately, there was no one there apart from the maid. Unfortunately, things, you know, she saw the faces things happened uh you could look there it is i believe a lone star crime scene at the moment but uh that was a day or so ago do you have any images of the of the decor that we're looking for that i do indeed and he pushes uh, an optical chip like a, a good old-fashioned optical chip across the table to you that should all be right, all the thanks. information you want although if you do need any more information feel free to uh contact uh Mikael! Mikael! Da. Pop up, yeah. Uh, feel free to contact Mikael if you would like any more details. And in through this side door, from the door, which has the detonators in it, if you want to know which, um, not the one that has the dead people, uh, comes this elf in sort of this pretty nice suit. Um, you can't tell his age because elf. Um, he looks a bit more... well... His etiquette is certainly high from the way he walks and the way he presents himself a little bit, you can tell. He goes, Yes, uh, if you would like more information, I believe you can be in contact with me. And he pushes a comm code to all of you. Okay. All right. 
We're good to go. Is there anything else uh, that you guys want to ask? Are the police investigating the maid or are the police investigating him, him as a missing person? Do you have any idea? No, I have no idea on that front. I assume they are investigating the maid now. Okay. Well, that should, on my end, I think I'm cleared up. Yep. Do you have a time what? frame you want this done by, by the way? No, I'd prefer sooner rather than later. I do not know how far he will be in the window when he will get back. I'm going to speak up in meat space and just ask what you want done with him. Mm -hmm. I honestly do not care either way. I would like my stuff back. I would like it to return to me. Um, beyond that, it is up to you. If you would find it easier to uh, remove the situation, then go ahead. If you would find it in your interest to leave him alive, I honestly could not care. I believe that either way it would offer a good enough demonstration of not to cross us. At that I nod and look to Gaywin and just broke my shoulders as if to say, I'm ready to go. Let's get going then. Okay. Uh, he gestures um, and you, basically the guys behind you sort of nod and the two guys who brought you in before I'm... step forwards. As I'm walking out, I, I pause and just kind of turn back to him and say, one last thing. Duh. Where is... Do you know, happen to know where the deck was implanted? Ah, yes. I believe that is uh, in the files. I believe it is uh, just inside of his scapula on the uh, left-hand side. I nod and turn back it's to cough. leave. Okay. And as you walk out, you notice the doc coming forwards and fussing over him. He's like, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah the name in the patio. Um... You walk up the stairs, you notice him thumbing out the clip and feeding three more bullets back in. Uh, the guys take you upstairs quite silently. Take you to your van. He goes, okay. I believe he really likes you. He does not uh, just take anyone downstairs and let them live. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm kind of glad to still be alive. It seems like this is going to be a business partnership. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully at the beginning of a beautiful friendship. The best. <laughs> he he passes the side of your van and just walks back inside. Okay. So let's fire it up quick... where you just want to go. i do a quick check to see if everything's actually still in here. Sure. Oh, my, my, my gun. Your gun. Uh, da, da, sorry, but there you go. And he, he hands you your holdout. Yeah, oh, thanks. Make an insight check. Know. Make a what check, sorry? Insight. Uh, so that would be charisma plus intuition. Judge intentions, sorry, I call it insight because it's... Oh, thank you. d and <laughs> I think it's insight. Yeah, but it's also judge intentions is just such a large mouthful compared. Uh, mm. one. Wow. So many dice to get... Wow. Yeah. He, we're lucky he... we're not rolling with the house rule that it's, it's just flat out. If you get more than a, a certain number of ones, then it's a glitch. That is just ugly. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he, he gives you the arm back. He's quite genuine thoughts, right? And he seems sorry that he accidentally almost came. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay, you get back in the van and you can drive off. Well, they seem nice. Where do you want to go to, gentlemen? Where do you want to plan this thing out? 